Okay, here we go. Not like that. Nope, that's too low. All right. Good morning, happy Monday, and happy new year. January 3rd marks the first video of 2022. I'm wishing everybody a happy, healthy, prosperous year. Um, so let's get on with it. Um, sitting here at the shop and um, I want to talk about center lines as it relates to axe handles and boards and whatnot. <laughs> First of all, um, as a maker that is trying to get his handles to the next level and um, produce something that can be adjusted and have, when you're making a handle, things can be known, uh, center lines, balance points, and whatnot. It's really hard uh, to know those things unless you have some sort of uh, guidelines. So really, I'm just gonna try to confine this to uh, center lines um, for getting started and uh, for, you know, this would be, I kind of have, I guess, this running side by side with the uh, let's make a split max. Uh, I haven't made it to Lowe's yet and I haven't made it to Farm and Home. So I need to make sure that that happens this week. Um, but anyway, I have a blank uh, that I have the center line marked out on it. And I do this because when I lay out a handle and, uh, you know, incidentally, if you don't want to lay out your handle, that's perfectly fine. Uh, this is going to go to the bandsaw. There's going to be material removed. You can't just keep going through stock until, you know, uh, I can't have it not material um, dissimilar on either side of the center line. Uh, if you're that good that you don't need any lines, more power to you. I like lines. Uh, maybe some point in my career I won't need lines, but I like lines. Because when you get to shaping your eye and your fawn's foot, you have it, uh, you have quadrants and you can see the shapes and all you have to do is make sure that your shapes in this quadrant are the same in relation to the center line and you're gonna be uh, more uh, comfortable and you're gonna develop a comfort level uh, because you're gonna know that you have uh, a four-way symmetry. Um, one edge breaking towards the handle and one edge or one uh, one plane or whatever you want to call it, breaking towards the eye. So basically what I do on a handle uh, is I lay out the center line. Because if you're buying wood, uh, there's two reasons. If you're buying wood that looks like, oh, like this, which is, could be S2S, surfaced on three sides with a straight line rip, or S3S, surface for uh, three sides with a straight line rip You're dealing with a board that has irregularities in it it's not processed it's not jointed flat uh, so you really are gonna need to really throw a center line on there like again like unless you are like monster monster good at at sighting and I'm good at that but I don't have time to individually sight every handle uh, because what's going to happen when I'm doing it when I'm doing a pro production run I sorry I didn't mean to cut that sentence in half with another idea um, but I would much rather have a center line to where I can judge how much material is coming off of either side rather than to have to constantly be looking at that thing if you've got 10 handles staring you in the face you're wasting time. And what the center lines are also gonna help you with, it later down the road, you're gonna be bringing machinery in to this. It's gonna help you size your blanks, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, like even on the router uh, duplicator, it's gonna help you find uh, center axes instead of center of the board. There's a big difference in that. Um, so anyway, um, 
how do you get a center line? There's two different ways that you can do it. And if you don't have a set of just basic uh, calipers, you could use a compass. It would be a little bit harder because you can't lock a compass down necessarily. Uh, I like these. I think these are like 20 bucks at uh, Home Depot. These are fairly accurate, but I don't, you can see the battery's gone. I don't even really use the battery. I like these because you don't have to do any measuring. Now, one thing you might find useful is a machinist's rule. What you get is a uh, something that's easier to manage with your fingers and your marker versus something like this. Although this is Empire, I really like uh, their measuring devices. Um, I like their blue speed square. And this stainless steel uh, bench rule is not bad. This is totally suitable. And it also is, you know, manageable. Um, so anyway, back to center lines. Um, anybody that's in construction knows that if you want a straight line on something, you measure the ends and you snap a line. If you um, measure all the way down the board, if there's any sort of discrepancy, you're going to end up following, uh, you're going to end up following, uh, the contour. In other words, if I were to pull off of the edge with a board that isn't jointed flat, in other words, if this board has a hook in it, your center line or your side of the ax handle is going to follow the crook in the, in the handle blank. Uh, so that's what the center line is eliminating. Uh, basically what you're doing is, what I do is, I just look where the center of the board is and I guess um, where it would be with the lines already on it. Um, let me, uh, let me grab the phone and see if I can get this to be more hands-on kind of looking stuff. Now, basically, um, I'm going to take a center, make a center mark here, and I'm going to make a center mark up here. Uh, because this, the handle is a certain dimension. I leave more meat with the handle, so I have plenty to work with. And then this is the eye, it's obviously less. So basically, um, I just come in and let me get this to where it's not, not there we go. Okay, so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the side of this to the right, far right, and then obviously, so that looks about center to me. Now I'm holding the phone so I can't lock, I can't do the set screw, but I can hold this together with my hand as well. I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna press down on that. And that, you can see that mark. So now, I can do that. Okay, so, geez, I'm about a quarter of an inch off. So, I can make another mark. And now, those two marks, it's easier to split the difference just by eye. And I've got another mark, so I will open up my calipers. And now I can't, find, okay, there they are. Now I'm gonna to go to that center mark that I made, catch the side. Oopsie, oopsie. Oopsie, come on you. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna do that. We'll lock it down. Now we'll go to a different spot, just a little bit different spot. And we'll mark it again. And put him in the groove. And we're right on it. So without measuring, we found our center of this portion of the handle. Now, I've jointed this, so I know that 
both of these edges are flat, but just for the sake of, let's pretend like this is not, and it's got a curve. Let's see, it has a slight curve to it. So we'll come down here and we'll do the same thing using the, using the measurement we just used. Okay, so we're a 16th off. Well, actually we're not, we're not too shabby. It's kind of hard doing this and looking through the camera. It's not shabby. Uh, maybe a fuzz to the right. So we'll just take our pen and we'll go to fuzz to the right. And there's our center line. So now we found the centers across the handle. And we'll turn it over and we'll do the same thing. Doing it on the bottom, uh, if you're gonna run this through a bandsaw or sanding or however you're gonna be re removing material, um, it's gonna let you know if you're, I mean, even with a rasp, it's gonna let you know how much, by the time you put your marks on for your actual handle rough, uh, in other words, if I want, say, an inch and an eighth, uh, that would be nine sixteenths either side of this center line. Um, so, uh, we'll pull off nine sixteenths to the right and nine sixteenths to the left, make a mark. Same thing down there, connect the lines, uh, and we'll get to connecting the lines here in a minute. Um, connect the lines, and then do the same thing on the bottom with your calipers. And then what you, what you end up having is, and if, if this isn't square, you still have a center line that's cutting through. It's, it's, it's perfectly vertical. It's not going like this. If you pulled off of the sides, the irregularities of the board could throw you off an eighth or sometimes even more depending on the board. So um, that's kind of that. Uh, now, I love using this to connect the dots, but sometimes if you have a 34, 32, uh, and this is only 24, how do you connect the dots? Well, um, I sort of started out using a, uh, just a wooden uh, uh, yardstick, which works real well. Um, you, could, uh, you could rip yourself a piece of uh, quarter inch plywood, about an inch and a half wide, uh, if you had a table saw. What I like to use, I go, went to uh, the box store, and I use uh, eighth inch, and uh, I think this is 16th. 16th works really good. Now you have to make sure that you don't lay these on the floor and they don't get bent up. This is a, these are actually bent to conform to the shoulder. So all you have to do is line up your marks and you're good to go. That's a good starting place. Uh, if you look at this handle now, this one's all laid out. You can see once I remove this, uh, I will leave this line on the bandsaw and I will clean it up on a sander that's set at 90 degrees so that on the top and bottom of the handle, you'll just be seeing this black line. And then as I shape this, don't remove this line. Or if you're going to remove it, leave a little bit there and leave a little bit there, you know, so that you can reconnect this line if you need to. I also mark the line on the ends. It's helpful when you're doing your Fawn's foot, all you have to do is look at the shapes on either side of that line and you'll know very quickly, um, if you're, if you're being uh, symmetrical or not. The same thing goes with the eye. Now, uh, I think I've, you've seen in a video before, an earlier video, uh, John Hudson and I were kind of playing off of each other with he, he kind of got me into using the ball peen hammer. I still uh, put 
a piece of packing tape over the bottom eye of the ax. And I take a, a little Sharpie like this, not the big one, a little one, and I mark the center lines. And then I take the ball peen hammer and I basically, that ball peen hammer uh, scores and, and it gives you a perfect carbon, carbon copy of, excuse me, of the eye, the bottom eye. And then all you have to do is uh, line it up with your center line and you know exactly where you have the exact shape of the bottom of the eye and you know where it's going and you know that it's going to be aligned on the center line. So I hope some of this helps. Uh, this is just the way I do it. This is what I've been developing um, because with my, you know, my ultimate goal with all of this is to be, it's a steady progression up to sizing blanks, sizing uh, master copies and all of that stuff. But I have found it extremely helpful in my draw knife and hand work and my rasps. I don't think I'll ever get away from doing handles by hand. There's just something about doing handles by hand that I just dearly love doing. Um, and it definitely translates into taking the handles to the machines. Uh, does doing it on the machines translate to doing X handles by hand? I'm thinking not. Uh, you know, you have to you have to understand the shapes. Anyway, I'm off to the next thing, and everybody take care. Thanks for all the comments. I really appreciate it. You people are awesome, and uh, welcome to the new subscribers. If you've just kind of bumped into this channel, give me a chance, and uh, we'll try to win you over with some good content. I'll talk to you all later. See ya.